Boats around China may be operating increasingly off-grid in the East China Sea. Here are the emerging details. A new Chinese data protection law may be causing an increasing number of vessels to switch off tracking systems, usually used in maritime transport, according to satellite data from commercial satellite firm Unseen Labs. And the effect could be to help conceal the activities of fishing boats while worsening the current shipping crisis and congestion of ports. Unseen Labs data reveals that up to 80% of vessels didn't broadcast an AIS signal during an eight-day satellite campaign in the East China Sea in November. The AIS, or Automatic Identification System signal, transmits a ship's position to other ships. The UN's International Maritime Organization and other management bodies require large ships to broadcast their position with AIS in order to avoid collisions, according to Global Fishing Watch. AIS has also become a tool for port management, as explained in an Unseen Labs press release, by providing information on berth availability and anchorage waiting times, among other things. This, along with the fact that six of the world's ten busiest container ports are in China, potentially presents a major obstacle for the international shipping movements. The new law behind the shift requires all handlers of Chinese data to gain government approval before any transfer of data to foreign countries. Unseen labs suggest companies may effectively be playing it safe by turning off tracking systems before seeing how the new law will be implemented. The new data adds to several existing transparency issues that already linger around Chinese maritime activity, most notably in the form of the so-called Chinese Maritime Militia. Defined by the Center for Strategic and International Studies, China has a significant number of fishing vessels that forego fishing full-time to serve as a direct arm of the state in order to bolster China's presence in contested waters in the South and East China Seas. Gregory B. Poling, director of the Asia Maritime Transparency Initiative, explained in a talk to CSIS that these boats receive military funding and training, and have weapon storage facilities and large water cannons on board, as well as steel hulls that can be used in aggressive physical confrontations against fishermen from other countries. These boats go further than simply turning off their AIS systems as other fishing boats might. Instead, they actually have weaker short-range Class B transceivers, which simply cannot be picked up by satellite. And then, in a non-exhaustive list, there are also the practices of China's distant water fishing fleet, which can also be considered in the same terms. China is top of the IUU Fishing Index's rankings for illegal, unreported, and unregulated fishing in an attempt to quantify countries' vulnerability to those kinds of fishing. This ranking includes potentially turning off tracking systems in order to operate covertly, historically contributing to a massively underreported catch. Other countries' fishing boats are also widely accused of this particular practice, but in combination with the other areas of transparency in which it is lacking, China's maritime activity increasingly is widely seen as ticking more opaque boxes than almost anyone else. During 2020, despite the pandemic, China has increased its campaign of using its ships to claim most of the South China Sea as its own territory, including a shoal only 140 kilometers from Malaysia. Named Luconia Shoals, this submarine ridge lies 1,500 kilometers from China's southern island of Hainan. The shoal is also inside Malaysia's exclusive economic zone, meaning that China has no legal right to patrol the area. However, Chinese Coast Guard ships are currently harassing oil and gas activity in the area, according to the U.S.-based Center for Strategic and International Studies, or CSIS. The CSIS released tracking data showing that Chinese patrol ships have been increasing their aggressive patrolling in the region. One important concern is that these ships are now also targeting Vanguard Bank, an oil and gas-rich shoal claimed by Vietnam. The area had been quiet until Chinese vessels began persistent patrols in July, when Vietnam decided to cancel a drilling project in the area. The CSIS says Beijing is using the persistent patrols in an effort to normalize its presence and thereby strengthen its claims of ownership. The Center for Strategic and International Studies, or CSIS, has published satellite images that show China is aggressively building electronic warfare installations in the South China Sea. This means that the waterway could soon be an electronic dead zone in which U.S. ships and planes would find it hard to function. The think tank showed that Beijing's artificial island bases at Subi Reef and Fiery Cross Reef now have large communication and intelligence gathering installations. It also pointed out a network of sensor towers between the island of Hainan and the Paracel 
Marshall Islands. These are ideally placed to monitor and interfere with any electronic activity in the region. The think tank says this means vital equipment on U.S. systems may not perform as expected. Drones could be hacked, navigation signals could be distorted, and data links could be hijacked, while communications could also be intercepted and jammed. In practice, this means that combat planes could struggle to find their targets, drones could turn against their owners, and the complex web of data sharing that makes the F-35 so useful could be broken. The South China Morning Post reports that China is planning to build an island city on Woody Island and neighboring islets Tree and Drummond. According to the Communist Party Secretary of Sunsha, the aim is to turn the island and two islets into a national key strategic service and logistics base. According to the Asia Maritime Transparency Initiative, Woody Island is China's main military base in the Paracels and is equipped with an airstrip, aircraft hangars, ports, and missiles. Woody Island is also home to a settlement of about 1,000 people and serves as the administrative capital of the three island chains it claims in the South China Sea. The U.S. has long criticized China's expansion and militarization of the disputed region and challenges territorial claims with freedom of navigation operations despite protests from Beijing. On March 14th, two American B-52H Stratofortress bombers, which can carry nuclear weapons, flew over the South China Sea for the second time in 10 days. A Chinese fisherman was killed on Friday after a dozen South Korean Coast Guard officers boarded his boat during an interception in the Yellow Sea for illegal fishing. A handful of Chinese fishing boats were in South Korean waters near Wangdeung Island on Friday morning. The South Korean Coast Guard intercepted the Chinese boats. When a dozen South Korean officers boarded one of the boats, the Chinese fishermen put up a fight, prompting a South Korean officer to fire live rounds, reportedly with a K-9 handgun. A fisherman surnamed Song was killed in the shooting. Illegal fishing by Chinese fishermen is common in South Korean waters. In 2010, two Chinese fishermen were killed after their vessel crashed into a South Korean Coast Guard ship and sank in the Yellow Sea. The U.S. has sought to test China's resolve in the South China Sea. Here's what you need to know. A U.S. Navy aircraft carrier strike group and a destroyer operated in the South China Sea on Wednesday, days after China introduced a law requiring foreign vessels to give notice before entering waters it claims as its own. Guided missile destroyer USS Benfold traveled within 12 nautical miles of Mischief Reef in the Spratly Islands, according to a U.S. Navy press release Wednesday, and the USS Carl Vinson, along with its strike group, also trained in the same region. According to Stars and Stripes, the USS Carl Vinson carries F-35C Lightning II stealth fighters and CMV-22B Osprey tilt-rotor aircraft, and a spokesperson said it held maritime strike exercises and coordinated training between surface and air units on Monday. Chinese state mouthpiece The Global Times said China had responded to the USS Benfold by conducting whole process tracking and monitoring to warn it off, utilizing the naval and aerial forces of the Chinese People's Liberation Army. The U.S. Navy said its operation was lawful and reflected its intention to uphold freedom of navigation, while a statement from a PLA spokesperson said it was proof the U.S. is the biggest risk and peace breaker for the stability and peace in the region, according to The Global Times. China added that it has indisputable sovereignty over the Spratly Islands, in keeping with its self-declared nine-dash line boundary, which stretches hundreds of miles south and east from its most southerly province of Hainan, according to the BBC. Stars and Stripes notes that, as part of the sovereignty claim, China has reclaimed land and built military infrastructure in the Spratlys since 2014, with the Council on Foreign Relations website explaining that construction involved ports, military installations, and airstrips on islands in the Spratlys and Paracels. It says Woody Island, in particular, has been militarized through the deployment of fighter jets, cruise missiles, and a radar system. However, a number of countries have laid claim to the islands and various zones in the South China Sea since the 1970s, owing to its rich natural resources and fishing areas, and sovereignty is hotly contested, with a 2016 Hague Tribunal ruling that China's claims of historic rights within the Nine Dash Line were without legal foundation. That ruling has by no means lower tensions in the region, with acts of perceived aggression from China building up. This April, for instance, CNN reported analysts called out a secret Chinese maritime militia for being aggressive 
aggressive in its efforts to push the fishing fleets of other Asian nations out of the South China Sea. China denied that the militia existed, but Western analysts said study of these fishing boats showed that they formed an integral part of China's military actions. The boats are often huge by fishing boat standards, but appear not to catch any fish. They have automatic weapons aboard and reinforced hulls, making them dangerous at close range. With top speeds of around 18 to 22 knots, they are also faster than 90 percent of the world's fishing boats. According to CNN in April, analysts said China has been using these weaponized boats to protect large flotillas of normal Chinese fishing boats. That setup allows China to quickly send hundreds of Chinese fishing boats to any disputed island, a flotilla so large that it can't be challenged without triggering a military confrontation. And in a March demonstration of what these boats can do, more than 200 Chinese fishing boats crowded around Whitsun B for weeks, a major fishing ground and part of the Philippines' territorial waters. The response to that kind of pushy behavior from the U.S. has largely come through freedom of navigation incursions like this week's. However, other countries from around the region have also come up with their own responses. The Council on Foreign Relations notes that Japan has sold military ships and equipment to Vietnam and the Philippines to upgrade their maritime security capacity and deter Chinese aggression. But more dramatically, at the end of 2020, the leaders of Japan and Australia reached a preliminary agreement on a bilateral defense pact, according to a statement from Australia's prime minister. That agreement allows the countries to train on each other's territory, makes it easier for troops from both sides to share military bases, and streamlines cooperation during military exercises and disaster missions. At the time, Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison and Japanese Premier Yoshihide Suga held in-person talks during which they also agreed to cooperate in tackling climate change. But what's clear is that for Japan, the deal represents a pretty major gesture as its first deal of this kind since the Status of Forces Agreement with the U.S. was signed in 1960. They are, in short, taking China seriously. In a joint statement, Suga and Morrison expressed serious concerns about the situation in the South and East China Seas and strong opposition to militarizing disputed islands and other unilateral attempts to change the status quo without explicitly mentioning China. On top of that, those talks coincided with exercises in the Northern Arabian Sea involving the four countries that comprise the Quad, the U.S., Japan, Australia, and India. The Quad is an informal strategic forum between the four countries that is rapidly solidifying into a formidable anti-Chinese bloc. That naval drill, codenamed Malabar, included India's Vikramaditya Naval Carrier Battle Group and the U.S.'s Navy Nimitz Strike Group and frontline warships from Australia and Japan. Beijing has described the Quad as an Asian NATO designed to counter China and the group already shows signs of expanding. In March 2020, the Quad Plus countries, India, the US, Australia, Japan, South Korea, New Zealand and Vietnam, held a second round of diplomatic talks focusing on the coronavirus pandemic. The Associated Press reported in June that Japan and Australia were now in the final stages with their defense cooperation deal. In short, these goings-on in the South China Sea are said to be a big story for a very long time. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.